It's not about motivation. When is new discipline? Wake up and win today. <laughs> discipline comes from within. I want you to ask me some deep questions about where is this, where, where does it come from? And I will try and answer you. But start from the beginning. It's a weird one, because uh, obviously we've had uh, in recent times, you know, Carl Foch has done a lot of stuff on his channel where he's talked about, you know, questioning Tyson's resume, saying, you know, it, the Wilder fight, because Joseph Parker's now beating him so easily, maybe Wilder wasn't that good. Um, and then obviously people saying Wilder got blown away by Anthony Joshua. Was he even that good? Do you get me? So that, yeah. so a lot of these sort of things, people but are kind now, of... But now, and I'm not just saying it because of Tyson, but was it the case of Joshua just being good? on that night and disposing with his fighter in front of him a proper is it was is well and no good now because Joshua smashed him you know or did Joshua just come in on that night and listen Joshua was probably as good as heavyweight as I've ever seen that night you know why have you got to take it from people do you know what I mean like yeah, and, 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 and different times in and different times in different boxers careers you know, you can be a good man one minute and not as good the next minute. You know, I'm not... Uh, listen, I am not a fan of Wilder at all. But when Tyson fought Wilder, Wilder was the most dangerous person in the heavyweight... In the, in the heavyweight fucking whatever it was. There was no one else more dangerous than Wilder. He could, he could cross this room and he'd hit you with the right hand as fast as blink one, two, three. He'd tap you and... and, and uh, yeah, and active, and and you know he's a good man, but it's worth you've got that was Tyson's third or fourth comeback fight after losing ten stone as well. Well, it was his third fight, yeah. Um, and he had a few few warm ups. He had a couple of warm ups, and that was his third fight. And then he went in, he went into him um, after that there, and then the the second fight was on, and then top rank come with a with at the time a ridiculous offer. And went that went down the route there and had a couple of fights with the Tom Schwartz and the Otto Wallen. And these these okay, there wasn't uh legends of the sport, but they was all in the top five of organizations. So there wasn't there wasn't people who was picked out of a pub. Mm -hmm. There was in the top five organizations. Uh, uh, Tom Schwartz was ranked number four, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so he's had that and then he fought uh, the other fella um, Wilder again coming in active stopped him in seven rounds um, and then there was a rematch clause and then because the rematch clause run out because of the COVID Tyson wanted to fight Joshua and then supposedly that fight was getting all let me tell you that fight was getting all uh, I, I think he agreed and whatever it was and but it's like uh, me and you agreeing on something. What Tyson's got to agree on. Me and you, it's we can. It's irrelevant what me and you come up with. Mm -hmm. If the main man is got something else in mind, do you understand? And and the, and the, and as as they was talking, there was official business in the in the court because it was it, fair dues that the contract run out, but it run out in the COVID. And no, no one could do anything, so they had a good argument. So Wilder won his arbitration, whatever it was. So he had to. It was pointless going any further. He had to then fight Wilder. So he fought Wilder um, in one of the best fights in history, heavyweight history. Um, never coming in the best of shape. His daughter was nearly died wherever she was he was he, he was living in an hospital for three months however long it was i don't know the exact amount listen it may as well be 100 years ago in my mind it was he was but i know he used to live in rpa RPA hospital wherever it was yeah. and then he come back he fought wild in one of the best fights in history and then give him a bad bad item humiliated him took his o took his o previously smashed him to bits that night and then Wilder never fought from there, however long it's been, two or three years. And then um, and then he's come back at neck end of 40-year-old and fought a world-class operator in Joseph Parker. He'll never be what he is, what 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 he deserves, because when he beats Usag, who is Usag? 
you know, I know who Rusek is, a tremendous boxer, but if someone wants to believe something, it'll never be, it'll never be what it is, will it? It'll never be, Tyson will beat Usyk, but then Usyk, he needs to beat Joshua. Beats Joshua, oh, he's four more at the right times. You know, it is what it is. Johnny Nelson, obviously done a few interviews, and he basically said in a, in a few interviews, and he's been quite open about it, that there's a suggestion that he's got a mole. Somebody within the training camp is telling him what's going on, and obviously suggesting that Tyson's been having obviously bad spars, and the camp's not been going to plan. So, uh, could you tell us what what's going on there? You know, this suggestion of a mole did that disrupt the camp? You know, just tell us from your point of view. Um, nothing really. Nothing really destructs the cat. When you're dealing with someone who's rock solid like Tyson, he's not bothered about anything like that. But if the the stuff what Johnny Nelson was saying was correct, it probably would be worrying and who the fuck's the mole. Um, and I think the only person who John, uh, Johnny Nelson has probably got uh, connections with in the camp would be would be Greg uh, from Sheffield and that Brendan Goldchip. By the way, a good friend of Tyson's and a nice guy. Uh, but the information what Johnny Nelson was putting out was just simply not true. So if it was coming from Greg, it would have been different information than that. And he'd have probably got, he'd have got the truth. Uh, he got the truth if someone was there. So I don't. I'd, I'd like to know his bowlers, but. Uh, it wasn't alarming to us because it was totally false information. Uh, so that climate... And I, I, I've mentioned Greg, and Greg would probably watch this and he'd get pissed. But with him being from Sheffield and that and his mole, well, it might be that's the only mole I can come up with. And I can, can't see Greg told, telling, for one, uh, being the mole, because Greg's worked with a lot of fighters and we've been we've been weeks with him and he hasn't mentioned anything about any fighters and we've, a, we've asked uh like just in conversations about questions he says listen he said if i tell him about him i'm going to be telling uh, telling someone about you and he said i don't do that so greg's 100 percent and i only mentioned greg because <laughs> that's that's the ball <laughs> well oh from sheffield and so on whatever but if the information what johnny nelson was saying was correct then it'd be worrying but it's quite comical that's fascinating, that because obviously a lot of people have took that story and believed it as fact. So, whatever Johnny was saying, you're saying it's false. But obviously, if he was saying it was true, then I'm guessing. What actually did uh, he say? What actually did he say? Um, basically, in short, that the camp's not been going to plan. The spars, you know, Tyson's not not been looking great. Uh, he's not on it. You know, stuff along them lines. But if you're saying that's not true, then then the information, if there ever was a mole, is that it kind of disproves that. So, so I heard that the camp wasn't going well, uh, and. Um... He got was it knocked out or, 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 or dropped in sparring. Dropped in sparring by Jared Bataille and someone else was supposed to give Andy's ass to him. Yeah, so with that information and that there, it wasn't alarming at all because none of it ever happened. Uh if it was true it would be it would be uh, it wouldn't be nice because people in the camp were supposed to trust him and so on. Um and, and and stuff like that shouldn't get out if ever it did happen. It's like if Tyson knocks someone out sparring, well, she's knocked plenty of people out sparring, you wouldn't know because it'd be none of us what would be saying it. So um, it wouldn't. It, things don't get leaked. So yeah, it wouldn't. It, not alarming, not worrying, not nothing. Um, but it made headlines, so it is what it is. Well, it makes that fight on May 18th even bigger. And I think, uh, thank you for kind of putting that rumour to rest. Uh, cheers. I don't know. If it, I don't know if it's put it to rest or not, but it's um, that's what that's the fact of the matter. Uh, one of the last things I want to ask you, Shane, is we've seen this crazy beef be between your dad and Carl Froch. Uh, before I get to that, I, I came across an interview uh, of Tyson's uh, from eight years ago where he said uh, the last real world champion in this country was Carl Froch. And he spoke really highly of Carl. But obviously we've seen Carl... Like he doesn't mince his words. It's a bit like he just says what he thinks, and uh, you know, fair play to him because he, he doesn't care about what people think. He just says what he thinks. Um, but what do you make of this beef between your dad and Carl? Your dad's not really going to go fight him, is he? Um, pretty quite cringy, in all fairness, of of my dad's behalf. Um, I don't don't agree with it at all. Um, but my dad's his own man. Like he says, he's 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 his own man. He'll do what he'll do. And I've never actually spoke to him about it. 
with with me dad, he gets he gets irate because he's emotionally exactly exactly the same as me. He's emotionally involved with it. Uh, and when he gets irate, he comes out with stuff. Listen, my dad's fifth, however old he is. It is what it is. He'd be better off eating a cheese sandwich and watching telly. But he's uh, again, he's he's a big name in it. Uh, I don't really care about that sort of, that side of it. Uh, want the want whatever. Listen, he's got a few people offering him out, and I think they're talking about fighting and all this carry on. But we'll see. Um, Would you want to see him fight? No, not really. But the thing is, if you're if you if you if you opening if you're opening your mouth. Um, and saying saying stuff, calling not individuals out, but calling everyone out, and someone wants to step up to the mark, it's, you got to step up to the mark. Simple. Um, and it is what it is. Would I like to see him fight? No. Would I like to see the fellas who's offering him fight? No. Would it be a good fight? Probably not. Sixty year old apiece. Uh, but I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who want to see it. Um, but for me, I'm only interested in Tyson winning this fight. And after he's won this fight, I wouldn't even be bothered about seeing Tyson box anymore. Because 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 it wouldn't. It makes no difference after Tyson wins this fight. It makes no difference if he gets knocked out, if he gets mopped up off the canvas. As long as he comes home after this fight, uh, and the fights he has onwards, there I don't care because for me he's completed the game after this fight. Um, he's won every belt in boxing. He's won up every accolade. He's he's got more things. I'm I'm, I'm going to get it all on a plaque. From, from the start of his career to the end of his career. Uh, and I'm going to put it up somewhere in here because I'm I'm proud of what he's done. And for me, he only has to win this fight to complete the game. If he didn't even go in this fight, he's done enough and he's done probably more so than what anyone else has done. But to win this fight, uh, he seals it for me. On that note, uh, Shane, I genuinely appreciate nearly an hour of your time, um, top man. No, uh, you no, you can. I appreciate you speaking from the heart, and obviously, there's. I just wanted somebody to give like an insight from the camp to kind of tell people what's really happened because there's been too many narratives out there. And it's only fair that somebody from within the team that speaks from the heart just says it as it is. Uh, so, on that note, is there anything else you want to say before I let you go? Um, I I don't do these interviews for any gain, for me at all. It does me. It, it does me. Uh, um, it does me a negative, if anything. But uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know why I do them. Uh, yeah, and you're not a bad fellow. You've rung me up and asked me, so why not? And yeah, uh, if you've heard it, not like I'm some great man, but if you heard it from me, it's uh, it ain't sugar coated, and it's it's what happened. There's no there's no um, there's no there's no uh, skullduggery behind anything. It's just what it is. We're all we're sicker than anyone else. 100% Shane, likewise I respect you mate and I appreciate you giving me some of your time I'll let you enjoy your afternoon with your little ones Top man, thank you very much Fear, most people are governed by their habits their fears and their opinions of others 